name is Morgan Lynn. Hi, welcome my to Coast Man Radio Station, and my guest today is Morgan. Good to have you here with myself. Good morning. How are you guys? All right. Okay, Morgan, tell me about what you do. Um, so profession wise, I'm a registered nurse. Um, and from there, I started uh, my my journey as a professor about three years ago. So I'm a professor of nursing at the local college here um, in the greater Los Angeles area. Um, I am a avid traveler. Just that's what I do for um, just to re as a first responder, you really have to have an outlet and have something that you really enjoy to do. And that has really been um, a stress reliever for me. So I travel all over the world and yeah, um, I'm now Arthur. So. Well, yeah, because I might, I can understand the stress that I used to work in mental health. So I know that how it can be affect your uh, a bit of mental, physical being. Now, right. I watched a little bit of your YouTube channel, not a lot of it, just to get the gist of what you do. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, I could, uh, and I, I, I like the style you did it with because you try to get involved, not in the typical traveler sort of see the sight sort of thing. You try to get off grid a bit more. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Um. So yeah, I try to. Um. So right now. Um, with, I got kind of got sidetracked, so I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, um, me writing the book or just getting into the book, um, it, it's, it really, cause everybody is always asking me, how do you do this? How do you, you know, how, how are you able to navigate? How are you able to, um, do your per professional life and also, you know, your personal life. And so I just, it just compelled me to kind of like put all of the questions, all of the feedback, all of the, um, the kind of inquisitiveness of other people into one thing so that I can just answer everything for them, you know, and, and, and have that information readily available. Can you hold on one second? I'm so sorry. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. These things happen. Don't worry about it. Good life. Okay. Yes. And, uh, and and um, I know that being a woman and obviously of color. Yeah. You know, I don't. I just basically don't like me saying that. I don't yes. like to say the B but black word because some people don't like that word. Some people get offended by that word. So yes. I yes. apologize for that. Anyway, do you find it difficult when you travel, or do you make sure you go with professional guides and make sure it's all secure when you get there like the hotels you make sure a good quality safety and all that kind of thing yes so um that's a very very good question that you're asking um a as an african-american woman uh traveling a black woman traveling the world solo it is extremely um important to have the knowledge and understanding of where you're going where you're walking into so that's why it's so important I, I tell that especially for female all female solo travelers not just african-americans but just every nationality every race to really be informed and have do your research a lot of things what i do is i mean now that we have social media is very you know we we have everything at our fingertips so a lot of times I do a lot of researching so I can visually see where I'm going I look at maps um I I google and um as far as my professional guides yes when I am touring inside of a country or in 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 a tourist hotspot I like to have a guide that speaks the native language so that I can pretty much they can um ensure that I'm safe because if you are if you're in a foreign country and you do not speak the the native tongue then sometimes you can be bamboozled um somebody can be saying something that's very like that's not safe something that you need to be cautious of so I really like to have somebody that is culturally savvy not just speaks the language but actually a native from the the the, the city that I I'm going to so that they can really really give me that cultural experience because 
because when I go to these places, I really like to get the full experience. And that's why um, my book is called The Ultimate Experience, because that's what I'm I'm trying to get every time I step foot in a, in a new in a new country. So if I was to go out and buy your book, what would yes. I expect to see in it? Um, beautiful pictures. I have about 80, 80 pictures in, in, in throughout the book. Um, we're talking, I'm talking about uh, geography, safety, savings, because a lot of times what people think is that uh, traveling is unattainable, right? And for me, traveling, even when I weren't, was not at the peak of my salary that I am now, um, I, what I did was I always I saved and I was cautious about what I ate and I didn't get my nails done. And, you know, I went to thrift stores if I needed to, to, you know, do bargain shopping. So I really adjusted my life to be able to um, adequately be able to just get on the plane and go, even when I did not have it. So just teaching readers how to really just you know, live out your dreams and aspirations of traveling without having to worry about not being able to afford it. Uh, I put my top 10 countries, telling people where to go, giving them just travel advice. Um, some people have a, travel, a, a fear of flying, you know, just telling them, giving them tricks and tips on how to get over that. A lot of people don't even know sometimes, you know, even drinking coffee while you, when you're about to get on a plane can really, um, it, it can make you more jittery, make you more anxious, more nervous. So just little things, you know, this, the more, small things, big things, um, essential things, vital things, just to have you have the best experience ever. Uh, yeah, I have a friend who, uh, who's into cryptozoology and he travels the world looking for various myths and monsters. And I have every admiration for him because I would not have the guts to do the is it, He'd been to very far off countries in the world. Uh, some of them near the Russian border. So, you know, you've got to be very wary, as you know, when you right. go to different uh, border crossings, because some are very, I'll oh, just go through. Others are like, <laughs> no, you stand there. Right. <laughs> all, the, all your passport, the papers, you've got to prove right. everything. Especially if you've got cameras on you, they want to know why you've got a camera, I presume what you're going to take a photo of, you know, I know obviously you're not going to take any photos of anything like that, right. but they are, right. do you ever, ever come across that? You've been in the country and they sort of said, excuse me, can we pull you over for five minutes? Mm -hmm. Um, In regards to, yes, that has happened to me. I mean, I've been to 71 countries, so some something has happened to me at least one time in all of these places, Uh, but it, 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 most of the time, you know, I have when I'm out, uh, I just really like to know where I'm going and kind of know kind of what I'm getting into. But when I've gotten pulled over and said, hey, can you come over here for a second? I, I go, I'm very polite, you know, and I try to just wiggle my way up out of it. So, yeah, yeah, that's definitely happened to me before. Yes. Have you been over to the UK? I have. I have been to the UK before and it was actually really, really, it was amazing. I went what, over there. Mm -hmm. What parts did you visit? When I was in the UK, I was just in Lund central London area. And then um, I also went to um, the the castle and, you know, that type of stuff. And then um, I also went to the, it's on my refrigerator, where the hit, hit the hit, hedges uh the little walls um it's been so long ago it's been like eight years ago um I forgot the name of it but yeah I've been to UK and it, it was in December and you can only imagine as a California Los Angeles raid, how cold <laughs> it was yeah. Yeah. and I will, so I will yes 
I went with four other girls and they were mad. And I was, they was like, why did you, you know, yelling at me? And I'm like, see, this is why I go home. I mean, go travel by myself because they were just like, it is too cold. We're not, they didn't want to tour. They didn't want to go outside. They didn't want to do anything. So with that being said, that's why I like to travel solo so that I don't have to hear anybody's mouth. Have you ever, when you, for your nursing, have you done like volunteer work over abroad? Yes, I did that in Nigeria. Um, so when I was in Nigeria, I did do that. Uh, I did two missions in um, a small province in, in Nigeria. And when I went to Kenya, I have a nonprofit organization. So when I went to Kenya, I took uh, the young, the youth from um, my nonprofit to Kenya to do like an educational um, humanitarian give back to the, the children over there. We took backpacks, we took supplies, um, personal supplies, we took clothes and shoes and things of that nature. So oh. that, that was that was a good that was a good you, you don't realize how very poor some of these countries are. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> It's, a, it's astonishing to see, even though how poor they are, how still they live such a a, um, a great life, you know, and they're happy and they're content. So it's, it's, it was, I was happy to be able to show that to the youth here in Los Angeles and in the United States in general, American kids, we generally tend to be very uh, non-grateful, very entitled. So that was very, um, it was a good experience for them. Would you like to <clears throat> do a tour where you can, where you could, where, where history like slavery was, and then just say, look, you know, we know it was there. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can't deny it, obviously. But are you one of these people that would rather not, admit there was you know i mean because there's there's the two versions isn't there some people want slavery to be not mentioned at all exactly and i i think yes i agree i can understand because of the but i also think in history you only learn through mistakes and exactly. obviously that was a massive mistake so yes. I, I, I obviously i can ask you this because you, you're more <laughs> no, no, the knowledge more than I. Right, right. <coughs> so yeah, um, to answer your question, most of the time, the ones that want that that piece of history or those parts of history to be eradicated are the ones that are the you know oppressors. You know, those are the ones that generally, most of the time, wanted to be taken out or kind of erased or abolished. But um, it as as a person that come from um, ancestors that were in slavery, it is important to to know the true history, and um, and it's and it's also important to keep it in there. So just like you said, um, any mistakes that were made or any wrongdoings that were um, that did take place, they can be made right. They can be made, you know, we can learn from them and integrate it into, you know, modern day society and see how we can um, pretty much change the trajectory of like the future based off of the past. But sometimes if you just cover up the past, the truth of the past, what happens is, um, you know, we just kind of, we're not in a true form, a true state of like where we are in our present. So and also I, think, I, find, I find that in traveling, if you've got a disability, it can, mm -hmm. especially wheelchairs or anything like that, it can be more harder. I probably don't know if it is the same case now, but I do know a lot of people who had very bad experiences mm -hmm. if they're disabled, they're treated like, luggage basically pretty much yes yes um well i i can say this i i took my mom to cayman islands um in july and she uh was she had 
her cane, of course. And when we were inside of the airport, uh, I was able to order the wheelchairs ahead of time. So they were really good with that. You just have to do it ahead of time. And then when you are in another country, there is a lot of walking. So there's that's another um, aspect that has to be put into play and the accessibility of it because not every country especially poorer countries they don't have the accessibility for or to the accommodations for like disabled people so it's just good to know where you're going and what they can pretty much help you with yeah, so that you can a, have so you carry on. yeah and i i've just seen a picture of your book i like the fact that you're on a like a statue hand i presume it's in somewhere like peru or somewhere like that yes it is in guatemala yeah thought yeah. it might be because of the statue right uh -huh. and like the fact <laughs> you're standing there like almost model like sort of it's, did you deliberately choose that location for the photo or was it sort of by chance no, actually, when I was there, I didn't even know that I was going to write the book. I was just taking a picture. And when I were, was writing the book and I came to the end of trying to, like, finalize the cover, that was the first picture that came to my mind because it was almost like I think of it like the hand is just holding me out to the world. And um, I'm just looking out. And it was just a, it was just a, it, it brought my book full circle as to how I really felt about what I wrote and the sincerity and the the, the purpose behind me writing the book. It was to really just inspire other people and um, encourage people to get rid of fear and doubt and just really just kind of see get out there and see it for yourself because a lot a lot of times of I mean right now the world is so dangerous we have you know uh safety issues we have health um issues or whatever the case may be and with that being said a lot of people kind of shy away from travel and one day they'll look up and just realize that their whole life had passed them by and they don't have any experiences so then they're just on the hamster wheel just going and I was going to say I think when COVID came around and travel obviously was off the, the rules obviously I imagine the stress being a nurse then was quite difficult I know it hasn't technically gone away but because I'm hard to say this but it probably more true than I hate to admit because the death rate isn't so high now obviously it's not in the news so much right well to be honest to 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 give you a surprising fact when when COVID was happening I actually traveled a lot and it was because the rates were very very like low the airport looked like a ghost ship it was just like, it was so convenient. And because I'm a nurse and I'm going to work every day and I am uh, taking care of COVID patients, I said, well, hey, I, I don't have nothing to be scared of. You know what I'm saying? I, I just went out in the world. And when I tell you I did not contract COVID while being out there, because in other countries versus in the US, they, they are really meticulous. They are not as careless as far as um, when they go out. They don't, because a lot of times in the U.S., I, I remember during the pandemic, people would have COVID and they would know that they would have COVID and they'll still go to the grocery stores. They'll still shop. They'll still go to work and they were just spreading it. So when you went to other countries, they had more common courtesy. They were more clean. They had, they followed rules and regulations, protocol, that type of stuff. So I really just had a good time and I really mag, like took advantage of those very low fares and just those tourist spots that were, the, the, it wasn't overcrowded. So I really had a good experience while um in COVID but a lot of people that were scared of COVID they just stayed in the house of course but because I'm a first like you know I'm a healthcare provider 
I was going to work every day and looking COVID dead in the face. So I said, I might as well yeah, go out in the world. You get that sort of, oh, well, so what kind of attitude? Yeah. Because like you say, yeah. you know, it's like when, when I tell people what I used to do for mental health, they go like that. And I said, I said, well, I stopped doing it because eventually you end up a bit like the patients. It rubs yeah. off on you. You, it, yeah. you soak, soak it in. People go, yeah. oh, what do you mean? And I say, you don't look like they go mad like they are, but you pick up mm. little habits they got, you know. Without it. I imagine it's not so bad on the physical side, but mm. it, they say you're not meant to get attached to people. That's the the, the policy they try to give. But yeah. I always find it, unless you're the complete robot, that is an impossible to do. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you, we, uh, as you know, as you, just like you were saying, like some of the things that people that you would do, people like, what are you doing? You know, but for me, it's, it was, it was really a, a relief or a, a, a relief traveling, getting away from things, letting things go, leaving. Every time when I leave out of the hospital, I just try to unpack at the door. So when I walk out, I'm not taking anything with me. And when I'm traveling, the world that's the same principle once i step on that foot step foot on that on that plane as long as my bills are paid you know everything is fine i know everything is safe i get on that plane i go and have my ultimate experience and i come back home and do it all over again so i just wanted to really encourage other people to not allow fear to hold you back because that same fear will paralyze you and you know, a lot of times I can't lie and say that I've never been feel fearful for traveling solo or whatever the case may be. But when I get home, I'm so thankful that I did not just stay and allow my fear to overtake my thoughts and my decisions to travel. Have you got so, your book on you that we can see? It? Yeah, got- I grabbed it. Morgan's just going off to get a book, so she hasn't disappeared, people. So this is the book. So then you can see the photos on the about, and they're very glossy, very full of pictures, as Morgan mentioned. And they're all by Morgan, I presume. Yes. This is like the front page. And they're not just regular pictures. These are like full cover, very... um, Full illustration video um, pictures. There, I was in the I was in Morocco on the Sahara, Sahara Desert. So, I have this one. I was in a hot air balloon in Kenya. Wow! Um, and this was during COVID. As you can see, I had my mask on. <laughs> this I was in the biggest library here, and um, I was in South Korea in Seoul. And that's wow. the biggest library. Yeah. It Imagine was that awesome. was like, wow. <laughs> yes. I was here in Bali on the swing. So as I, as you can see, every three to four, three to four pages, um, you know, even here you have a checklist of, so a lot of people don't know there's 195 countries in the world. So when I say I've been to not 70 countries, everybody's like, oh my God, you've been to the whole world. And I was like, no, not even half. But um, in the book, you will have a checklist so that you can check off, you know, as you go and just see. Yeah, because you know, some of these countries are quite small, aren't they? That's why you probably never heard mm-hmm, of them. Mm-hmm. And this one, I was in Peru. At Machu Picchu, which is one of the um, seventh wonders of the world. So as you can see, this book is just full of pictures. I was in the Taj Mahal, sitting there with, I'm very cultural, like I love culture. So I like to in, uh, digest the culture. So in Mexico, it could just keep going on and on. It's 254 pages in, in my book. So it's, it's really a treat because a lot of people are very visual people, you know. You could tell them one thing, but if yeah, they see I, I can it, see what you especially when you're they traveling. To, they want to be able to, oh, that looks nice. I must go out and see it for real, you know. Yes. And so, like, even here, a lot of people, when they go to um, uh, Japan and they go, um, they go to Mount Fiji, uh, Fuji, then they can't 
they they generally don't go around the, the right date and they don't get to see the peak of Mount Fuji. So uh, I always I also tell um, a lot of the readers in the book to ensure that you're going at the right time. There's no war or conflict. Make sure that you know what you're going into. And I try not to plan too far in advance, like a year in advance or something of that nature, because what happens is so much stuff can happen in a year. You can go, now you have a, a war, now you have a conflict, now you have some political rallies and that type of thing. So I say six months is okay, but me, I'm a very spontaneous. So I might say, hey, I want to make a trip next month or, and not everybody can do that, but for the people that need to plan ahead, I would say six months is about the 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 maximum I would say um you could put it on your calendar of course for a year from now but really doing the accommodations and making the plans I would say about six months at minimum I think that's right as well and yes. what other advice would you say about money I mean obviously they always say never to carry money on you as such or not a lot of money anyway I, I don't know i I've never been to countries where it's a bit, I've only been to Europe, so it's not the same. Yeah, so it depends on where I'm going. If I'm going to a very rural area, I would carry cash on me. Um, also it depends if I'm going to a country that is not fond of US dollar. Not everybody is fond of the US dollar. Some people want their own local currency. And if that is the case, then I try to, I'll take my card and I will retrieve money from a bank there or an ATM there. I try not to also, I tell people not to exchange money in the airport because it's very expensive. Of course, that's the first thing you see. And so it's there, it's readily available. So they they take a, a advantage of that and they increase the prices. So most of the time I, I know exactly where I'm going to be staying. I try to stay, I, I try to shy away from Airbnbs. For a few reasons. One is because most of the time I'm a solo, solo female traveler and you don't know what your the neighbors like how the neighbors are. If there are some weird neighbors, um, you don't know who actually lived there, if there was some prior prior conflict, if somebody is actually uh just renting out that space. You also have carbon monoxide um possible exposures because if you're versus staying in a nice hotel you know a lot of people in um airbnbs are not required to have carbon monoxide monitoring so if you see some people in different countries they're coming up dead they they are you know go to sleep and they never wake up it's because of the carbon monoxide exposure and that's not regulating an Airbnb. So that's another thing, you know, I, I talk about in my book is about accommodations. Now, to be honest, if I'm going on a group trip and I look and I find a good Airbnb that will accommodate me and all of my friends, then that's a different thing. And also, I just always make sure in the um, description that they do have carbon monoxide monitoring. And yeah, as a nurse, and you say that's important. You can't take yeah. the nurse away from the job when the travel. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's, it's just yes. a natural thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what do your fellow students think of you traveling? They are inspired. They are inspired. Um, so I'm a professor of the last nursing class to get out of the program, and they are just in awe of me you know they're following me on Instagram and I'm like stay off my Instagram you know they just want to see you know what I'm doing where I'm going but it, it, it's it's very I, I feel good and I feel proud to be an example to them of how to really live your life, live your life, not just, you know, going to work every day and taking care of kids and just always giving yourself to other people, but also give yourself to yourself. So I really just take care of myself so that that makes me a better, well-rounded person. I'm more happier, I'm more um, vibrant. 
I'm more high vibrational. So I'm not walking through life mad at other people because I don't like my life. You know, I love my life and I try to be an example to other people that they can love their life too. And they can do whatever it is that they need to do and they, they want to do. So it's amazing. I think it's important. And have you got a website where people can look up more? I know you just mentioned your book, but it'd be nice if people can look your website up as well. Yes, um, my my website is www.morganlinton.com, and they can just see just everything that I do. Like I have a nonprofit, so I'm a founder and CEO of a nonprofit. I have a, a travel accessories called More Life which is anything from packing cubes to neck pillows, uh, compression socks, because I'm really, you know, I'm the nurse. So I want to make sure people are not getting blood clots on, you know, those long plane rides. Uh, just being a professor has been just amazing. And just being a nurse in general, just giving back and ensuring that people are being cared for um, at their optimal level. That's It's all been very rewarding and all of my jobs are what gives me the the funding that I need to get out and you know that's why I work so much because I'm so solely attracted to travel I was gonna say you're quite young to be a professor I am well I've I've turned 36 in in three weeks so I'm not as average age of professor tends to be a bit yeah yeah being rude but they are Yes, yes. And that and that that was my experience um in nursing school. And that's why it really inspired me to kind of change the trajectory of that. And because most of the nurse, the, the professors, they're very older, they're older and they're kind of stuck in their ways. They're very militant and you know, they don't there yeah if you look nowadays you, you'll see a lot of modern professors people that are really um professionals and and really know the the profession well so they they are suitable for a professor even though they are young in age yeah I, th- I just thought it'd be nice to mention that it just proves that it doesn't age is just a number and if you went out there and do the think uh, all the writing studying yes all, all the work that you have to do I mean you don't just get given it <laughs> yes. you have to do a lot of really hard work and yes. you have to prove that you know your subject obviously because yes. they won't yes. necessarily teach otherwise yes yeah and I'm also in school right now to get getting my doctorate in education so yeah, you have to have at least a master's to be a professor. So I, I got that about six years ago. So, and yeah, I have the experience to go with the the education. So that's how I landed the deal or the the position. Do you have family? Um. Yes. I well, I, I, not my own personal family. I, I'm not married, no kids yet. But um, yeah, I'm the oldest of four siblings, and you know, I have my mom and my father and. Just my I imagine idea. it's nice Christmas time to go and see him and mm-hmm. you just had um what would you call a big turkey thing over there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can the never... Turkey thing? Which the one? Oh, thing. oh the um Thanksgiving? Yeah, I don't I don't think of that. Oh okay. <laughs> uh, no, because it's very confusing that you're a turkey two hours a year. <laughs> yes, that is true. That is true. Do you guys sell it? Do you guys celebrate that or do you celebrate? No, things? no, no. We know Plymouth, where the founding fathers came from, they got a little plaque. Okay. And they, I think they got a museum. I'm not too sure. <laughs> they can go and visit and um, see where they go all over, that kind of thing. There's little books of people who signed it. I think, I think there is. I think got you it. should try to do, if you ever come over to the UK again, Sort of do like a drone of gropes to Land's End kind of thing. Okay. So like it's about 800 miles. You probably want to do a whole lot. You can sort of do like a, I'll oh, visit Yorkshire, I'll visit mm-hmm. Wales, I'll visit Scotland. So you see different cultures. Mm-hmm. Because you'd be surprised how much different cult- culturally uh, for a small country compared to America, obviously. It, we mm-hmm. we are in in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. especially yeah. with especially with 
football or what you call over there soccer yes yes that's what yeah we call it you guys call it football though right yeah 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 so yeah I, I have been um when I when I was out there like I said it was so cold I gotta come back in this in the in like in a summer month where it's very hot so I can really enjoy myself I still just enjoy an, it. just being an umbrella you go on okay got it okay yeah, always for umbrella make sure you have a nice cup of tea uh-huh. Always try, always going to cafe somewhere because you always hear or on a bus. If you get old get on a bus, you always hear a really good conversation about something. People going right. on about the most unusual things on the bus. But they don't care at all if nobody's over there listening to them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to it. I have so many countries on my on my list of things to do. I try not to go to the same country twice unless I'm actually in love with it. But yeah, I'm supposed to be going to Australia in two weeks. So I'm excited for that. You like that. It's very, very, very vast. Very, yeah. it, it is, it's parts of Australia that even Australians don't even know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm going to the, you know, the regular, I'm just going to Sydney, Melbourne, and things like that. Yeah, but it's still different. You'd be surprised the difference between Melbourne and Sydney. Yes. You'd be shocked about yes. the the cultural differences. Yes. Even 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 though it's the same country, yet again, different aspects. You now one's nearer the sea, one's further from the sea. Yeah. You mm -hmm. got all the different like surfing and Mm -hmm. cricket mad country obviously yes yes so i'm excited i'm i'm excited i'm gonna go i'm gonna fly from here to fiji and spend a few days in fiji and then fly over to sydney but yeah i'm excited i'm excited to be going to another continent that's cool so after, just... yeah after after australia then my last continent is antarctica and I have would have touched all seven continents on the world of the world. So I'm excited. Well, Morgan, I've really enjoyed our chat. So I'm gonna end this bit now and we say goodbye to